Let's just take a second to appreciate that Matt Pike never stops being Matt Pike, even when he's doing paid promotion. That wants to kill your mom. I want to punch a baby. I want to kill a grandma. Not that I really want to do that. On that note, we are ranking the albums of High on Fire, and we're starting with The Art of Self-Defense in 2000. Two years after Matt Pike formed this new band in Oakland, California, they dropped their debut in the wake of a three-song EP. Starting on a very Black Sabbath-inspired sounding note here, right down to the guitar tone and 70s psychedelic soloing, the vocal effects feel very retro as well. It does a great job of capturing that vibe, but almost to a fault, I would say. To me, it feels a little bit superfluous. Again, well-written and performed songs, and I dig the dark atmosphere and infectious grooves, but it feels like too much of a copy-paste of things that had already already been done before to me at this point. So still solid listen, but it's going to okay tier. They followed that up with Surrounded by Thieves in 2002. <laughs> Picking up largely where the last one left off, but seemingly with more elements of bands like Caius and early Queens of the Stone Age pulling their sound out of the 70s. Also newly signed to Relapse Records and led by single Hung, Drawn, and Quartered, complete with music video on Headbangers Ball. Banger of a song really emphasizing the increased heaviness and move from psychedelic doom to sludge. Also dig Eyes and Teeth as well as Speedwolf and Nemesis with that kinetic drumming. Still some lumbering doom focused tracks too, like the Yeti and Thraft of Canaan, which admittedly are my least favorites, but add to the dynamics. The production is still a little rough too, but it kind of adds to the overall dirty, grimy vibe. And so, yeah, he's he's still punching babies here. It's going to a good tier. Then we got Blessed Black Wings in 2005. <laughs> Starting on another super heavy note with Devolution, even the guitar tone just feels more pissed off. Stronger production, too. And as crunchy as the riffs are, Des Kenzel's drumming continues to frequently steal the show, and this is also notably the only album with Melvin's Joe Preston on bass. The face of Oblivion is super infectious and never fails to get me reflexively bobbing my head. Also love banging my head to Cometh Down Hesion. Further broadening the scope and dynamics with both the face of Oblivion and Brother in the Wind, venturing into more rock territory, feeling almost like they could have fit on Queens of the Stone Age rated R. I do find that it loses some steam for me in the second half. I'm not as in love with the title track, Anointing of Seer, or To Cross the Bridge, particularly due to some kind of grating vocal performances, I would say, but I do love the big dramatic closer, Songs of Thunder. This is a fan favorite and has also made several best and essential lists over a decade later, from Metal Hammer to Rolling Stone, but frankly, I think they have even better start-to-finish albums, so maybe it's sacrilege, you can let me know down in the comments, but I'm putting this one at great tier. And speaking of which, also let me know just your overall rankings. Where do you agree? Where do you disagree? We have plenty more albums to go, but also if you're enjoying the video so far, hit the like button. But next up is Death Is This Communion in 2007. <laughs> Once more coming in strong, groovy, and heavy with Fury Whip, and by the way, I love these song titles. They're so simple but effective across this entire discography. On this one, getting a little bit of Mastodon. Waste of Tiamat is also excellent with the driving riffs and wicked soloing. Love bobbing my head to Rumors of War. I even enjoy the doomier tracks here, like Death is This Communion, as they feel more effectively composed and paced, and also even more kind of intense sounding. Love the implementation of acoustic on several of these tracks for a little bit more sonic variety. Conrad's wall in particular has some kind of Middle Eastern mystique to it. More on that later. And I hear Mike slightly evolving his vocals with a little bit more singing on tracks like Turk and Ethereal. Not quite perfect, but still a strong one, and I actually think that this is one of the more interesting and engaging listens from start to finish, even in comparison to the last one. So we're continuing our slow climb here. This is going to amazing. Then we got Snakes for the Divine in 2010. <laughs> Moving from Relapse to E1 Music, love that cover art from Eric Roper, which depicts the biblical Lilith. Also, 
coincidentally on my shirt. <laughs> By the way, sometimes people ask me about where I got this shirt. It is from Blackcraft Clothing that make a lot of really cool shit. That is not paid promotion. They are just awesome. Anyways, love that tapping guitar intro on the opening title track, Shaking Up the Riffs, killer song. More great grooves on Frost Hammer. Ghost Neck is another headbanger. Mike's higher screams can get a little bit annoying at times. And also more singing on Bastard Samurai, which is still a little bit hit and miss. Some really high points, but maybe not as consistent. So this one still landed at amazing. It kind of stalled out the climb a little bit. I also think it's probably not quite as good as the last album, but it's going to amazing. But then we got De Vermis Mysterious in 2012. <laughs> Produced by Converge's Kurt Ballou, who rarely misses, if you ask me, producing some of my favorites over the years and actually every album from this point forwards. He always gives the mix such a full sound with so much presence to each instrument and an extra punch to the drums, not to mention seeming to always bring out the best in the performance that this is no different. Honestly, every time he does a record, I feel like he becomes sort of an honorary part of the band because his sound comes through so strong. But back to the music, awesome drum intro going into Serums of Leo, another great way to kick off a record, followed by another banger in Bloody Knuckles, and then the ripping, tearing Fertile Green with more fantastic drums. Top 10 track for me with this one. This is High on Fire truly firing on all cylinders, if you ask me. Incredible bass and pounding toms on the menacing madness of an architect. This is how you do Doom. Too. Like, Mike also just sounds so imposing on this track, and it just all comes together. King of Days is epic. Romulus and Remus kills. This one is going to perfection. It, it may be my overall favorite. Next up is Luminiferous in 2015. <laughs> Shifting to kind of a Motorhead vibe with big opener, the Black Pot. Love the D-beats and general energy that continues into the groovy Carcosa and the Sunless Years bringing back some more desert rock vibes. Yet more early Queens of the Stone Age energy on the Falconist, but also periodically picking up the pace and delivering some of their heaviest songs too, as with the damn near thrash metal Slaves to Hive and title track. Then you've also got The Cave, which has an almost like sweet leaf sound. Still digging the wall of sound Kurt Ballou production, but it does feel a little bit more rock than metal this time around and I don't dig all of these songs quite as much start to finish as on the last one but even so excellent stuff it's going to fantastic they followed that up with electric messiah in 2018 Now in the lead up to this album, Matt Pike was quoted as saying, I had this dream where Lemmy got pissed at me. He gave me a bunch of shit basically and was hazing me. The song is me telling the world that I could never fill Lemmy's shoes because Lemmy's Lemmy. I wanted to pay homage to him in a great way. And it turned out to be such a good title that the guys said we should call the album Electric Messiah. Wrong dickhead, trick question. Lemmy is God. Yeah! And as a big fan of this record, I am sure that Lemmy would approve. I can think of no better tribute to the patron saint of rock and roll than this high octave no bullshit set of tunes. This is High on Fire once more doing what they do best, slinging massive riffs and shouting their brains out. And of course, once more captured perfectly by Kurt's production. Love opener, Spewn from the Earth, Freebooter, God of the Godless, and of course, Electric Messiah. Drowning Dog is very sad, but an excellent turn for the band and makes for another excellent closer. There's seriously not a dud in the bunch, though Steps of the Ziggurat, House of Enlil, and Sanctioned Annihilation could probably be trimmed down a little bit. The last album with founding drummer, does Kenzel too, but Pike called it the best album they've done by far, and I think it is one of their best. It is also going to perfection. Which brings us to Cometh the Storm in 2024. Another slow cooker of a psychedelic jam and single burning down, but we also have album opener Lamb's Bread, which is not only supremely heavy, but also has a fantastic Middle Eastern sounding interlude that sounds arguably more ambitious than anything they've ever done before. This is apparently thanks in large part to Jeff traveling abroad to formally study Middle Eastern folk music and its related instruments. The title track is another interesting and dynamic track as well, really leaning into this mournful yet imposing sludge. Matt is in rare form on this one, 
kind of hypnotic too. Once more Kurt producing, making these things sound massive, and Cody Willis of Melvin stepping in on drums. Even more folk element in full spotlight with Karen Lickyol, seriously stunning stuff that reminds me of listening to El Nam Rood or Melichesh. Especially with a band like this where albums can start to sound kind of similar, it's great to hear them really evolving at this stage of their career and differentiating this work from the last few records in a big way. But all the same, they haven't given up on straight bruisers either, like Lightning Beard and the very to-the-point D-beat infused and properly titled The Beating. There are some parts on the album that again drag a little bit for me, like Hunting Shadows and the more traditional doom of Saul's Golden Curse and Tough Guy, but in many ways this feels like a matured version of many of the same ideas from Death Is This Communion. Overall, another excellent entry into this discography and a great listen. Had a lot of fun with it. It is also going to fantastic. Y'all check out this playlist for more rankings you may like or this video for something a little different, but that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.